let's pray as we get into the message. Dear Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to come to you and worship you in the word and to be challenged by it. Lord, I pray that you would challenge each one of us and that um, you would confront us where we're wrong and help us to put off that and to put on what you want us to put on today as you speak to us. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I want to start this message out with uh, an exercise. Uh, first of all, I want you to give me your, your a mean face. Don't be afraid. Just give me a mean face. Not all of you are participating. And some of you are not. Some of you can't do it. You're, you're not giving. I, I believe you can. I know you can, but give me your, your mean, like, give me your, I don't like what you just did, face, give it to me, all right, and then, or I, I don't like what you just said to me, I don't like your attitude, give, give me, give me that face, all right, some of you can't even do it, that's so funny, now, with that same face, Turn to somebody and say, Jesus loves you. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just made my point. You just made my point. Like, you can't do those two things at the same time. Uh, so this week, I had a challenge. I uh, went to MVC. The Motor Vehicle Commission. Yeah. Before I get started in this, does anybody work there? <laughs> no. Okay, if you work there, would you be able to admit it? No, probably not. <clears throat> so I went there, and I had a bad experience the last time. It was sometime in 2023, about a year ago. Went to get my real ID. Anybody have their real ID? All right, cool. So you've, you've gone through this. But this is month, is, you know, it's my birthday. So I had to renew my, it was that time, four years, renew the, the driver's license. But so get real ID. Um, and so I had to go there. And I had gone about a year ago to try to get it, but I didn't have my Social Security. I couldn't find my Social Security card. But I had other points of verification that I thought would do, but... <laughs> Since I didn't have my social security card, they told me I had to leave. And, uh, and so I was, I was going there on Tuesday having all of these negative thoughts about what was going to happen. I had negative thoughts about um, pe the people that worked there, right? They rejected me once, so they're going to do this again. And um, so I had negative thoughts like, they don't really care. They don't really care about me. They don't really care if I get what I need. Uh, and it's, it's written all over their faces. I, this is the, these are the thoughts that I have, very negative thoughts about, about them. You know, they only want the, the next break, right? Because that, that's, that's kind of annoying, like, right? They have windows open and you're trying to get checked in to see if they have the right. And, and then they just get up and they go on break. You're the next one, and you, they could have taken you, but they're going on break. And it's like you have this negative thought. All oh, they just want to, all oh, they just want to get done with the day. They don't care about me or anything like this. They don't care about their job. I knew that going into it. So I knew I was also preaching this message. So I knew that I could not have this, this, this negative mindset, and 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 then come up here and preach to you on Sunday. So I said I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to. So I did three things. I, uh, first of all, I prayed before I went in and said, God, just, I just pray that this goes well and that um, I uh, am a good representative of you. And um, it's like one of those things, you tell your face. Uh, and, and so I prayed, and I listened to worship music on the way to, uh, the, on the, way to the, the drive. It's like 30 minutes, right? <clears throat> so... Uh, I'm getting my mind and my heart ready, and then I said, "You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put a smile on my face." And 
I'm going to be the only one smiling. If I'm the only one smiling, that's fine. So I put a smile on my face. And then uh, every time I thought that, you know, that these negative thoughts came in my mind, I, I thought of uh, things that I was grateful for. Like the fact that having this ID got me on a plane that I could go see my grandkids and my daughter and her husband. Like these good thoughts, like they're coming out of me being there. And so I just praised God, thanked God through that whole time. And so I had four intera- interactions with real people, and um, two of them, they actually almost spot- smiled. And it was actually a really good good experience. Now, what changed? They, they didn't have a new business model for customer service, right? They... It's, it's not like they cared more about me. It's that I cared more about them. By not allowing myself to, to negatively talk in my mind about them as I was going through this experience. I, I, do you know what I'm talking about? You've, you've been in situations like that, and this negative, this negative talk, this negative self-talk, you could even be, it could be against God. You could be negative talk against God. You could be negative talk about yourself or negative talk about other people. I want to, the first verse I want to share here is Proverbs 25, verse 23. It says, as surely as the north wind brings rain, in other words, so, the rain comes from the south to the north. It, that generally brings rain. So a gossiping tongue causes anger. So that anger comes from this idea that we would gossip. And even if it's gossip in our mind, if we're gossiping and thinking negatively about anything, or especially someone, it tells us on our face. We can't smile. And um, if we do smile, it's going to be fake. And so this, the, the main idea of this message, as we talk about, we want, we, our goal is to silence negative thought. And the, the main idea is allowing negative thinking to dwell in our minds will negatively impact our whole life. We cannot change what we fail to confront. So we should confront our negative thinking. Because negative thinking progresses into uh, this negative self-talk in our mind. Negative thought progresses to also then to then a negative expression in some way. In my case, RBF. You know what RBF is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they just said, but um, it's 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 resting Brooklyn face or Bronx. I mean, uh, is anybody from the Bronx? Brooklyn? Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I can be guilty of that too. Um, and so that, that negative thought gives us RBF. And so we need to work on that. So um, it progresses. This, this progresses, and it's going to lead us to a place that is not good. So let's go in our Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians three sixteen. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another, and all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is going to be the main verse that we're going to use throughout that, but I want to come to the first part of this chapter, and I want to read some verses uh, leading up to this, because we need to see the context of this passage it's really important for us to understand this and how it applies to, to our negative mind uh, thinking. 
So it says, starting in verse 1, it says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So it tells us that we need to set our minds on things above, not on the things on the earth. So we need to confront our negative mindsets, our mindsets that are are on the earth, we need to confront them. And we need to change them because what we fail to confront will never change. So we set our minds on things above. And then uh, just, just, uh, I just ever since I've been starting to, to, to like study hard the revelation and Daniel and end times and stuff like that, prophecy, I've been noticing verses like this, verse 4. It's like an incentive. He, God is incentivizing us to, to have the right mindset, to have uh, uh, a, a positive mindset. And he says, when Christ, who is your life, appears. What is it talking about? It's talking about when he comes back, whenever we see him in glory, you, then you also will appear with him in glory. An amazing incentive, and the more I study the end times, the more these verses keep popping up everywhere. Verse 5, it says, Put on, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. So we put to death the negative mindsets. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Most of those things start in your mind. On account that these are the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. So put them away. Put them to death. Put them off. But now you must put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not, uh, uh, here there is not Greek or, and Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave free, but Christ is all in all. And then it says in verse 12, put on, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Oh, so, man, that's, that really is so convicting when I think about the NBC and going there. Like, w- w- did I put on a compassionate heart for every person that I interacted with? Did I, was I kind? Was I humble? Was I meek? Was I patient? Did I bear with them? Wow, man, it's, that's so convicting. You understand what I'm saying? If, if one has a complaint, if one has a complaint against another, if one has a complaint against another, what do you do? You talk to somebody else about it, right? That's what it says. Right? No, it doesn't say that. If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. No, it says, if one has a complaint against them, then think really negatively about them. No, it says, forgive. Forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace 
And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you have been called to one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It's a very powerful, powerful passage. And it is so convicting. There's a battle that, that it's, it's, it, where there's a war that's going on in, for, our, for our mind. And, and, and if we're going to allow the word of Christ to dwell in us richly, that idea, dwell in us, is, it comes from the, the root word that is, is house. It's translated house. So, so we are to let the word, we are a, a, a place where the Christ's words are to inhabit us. And it says richly, abundantly, we're to make room. In order for us to make room for, for our minds to be set on things above, we have to get rid of the negative thoughts that we currently have or we have on occasion. I think all of us. All of us have room for improvement here. Remember our main idea, allowing negative thinking to dwell in our minds will negatively impact our whole life. We cannot change what we fail to confront. Paul also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, that we're to take every thought captive to bring, it, bring them into obedience to Christ. The same idea... In order for us to, to make a change in our thinking, we have to confront our thinking on a regular basis every day. We need to go through this process. And so I'm, today we're going to talk about three ways that we can confront negative playlists. So this is like a playlist that's playing in our mind all the time. And it's, it's on repeat and it's like it's never stopping unless we are intentional about confronting it and we hit stop. So three things, three ways we can do that from this passage. We let the word of Christ confront our thinking with community. So look at verse 16. 16 it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. We're to teach and admonish each other in all wisdom. So the idea there is we're to teach one another, we're to admonish one another in all wisdom, the words of Christ, the words that are supposed to dwell in us so richly, we're to teach each other. This is, this is talking <laughs> in our community, in a, us, when we meet as small groups, we, we need to confront this negative mindsets that in community. Admonishing means to correct. It, it means that we would, we would confront each other lovingly and caring, but we would confront each other's mindsets. So I think we need to think about this. We need to talk about this in our small groups. If you're a small group leader, if you're in a small group, you should want your small group leader to lead you in that way that, hey, we would, if we're all struggling with the same battle every single day, then we would talk about it and we would help each other. We would pray with each other. And the standard for our confrontation for that is the word of Christ. It's the Bible. The standard is a standard. That's why I have this shirt on this morning. The standard is a standard. It's the word of God. And sometimes we can love our opinion far more than we can, that we love the word of God. And we need to love the word of God over our opinions, but our opinions, unless they are from the word of God, aren't nearly as good. This is the standard. And we need to keep the standard to standard. 
So community is one of the greatest sources to have this biblical confrontation with negative self-talk, negative people talk in our lives. And we all have people that speak negativity into our lives, don't we? And, and we have to make the choice whether we're going to hear that. Whether it's gossip about somebody else, whether it's, whether it's just negative talk about themselves or even negative talk about God. Maybe they're so dissatisfied about their situation and they're not directly naming God, but he actually, in their, in their, in their negative self-talk to you, they're tearing down God. And this is what we need to confront. See, it's, we're, we have all have this same, the same problem, the same battle, but we rarely talk about it. Like we are acting like it doesn't exist. So we are to put, put on teaching. Remember it says put off, put to death, those things that will, the negative mindset, we were to put on teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. The Greek word to admonish means, it means just to warn, rebuke, confront, reprove. And a good small group will lovingly show grace, but also share truth. It's, it's so important. Like, so many, so many of us, and including myself, I'm I'm a I'm more prone to just give grace. My wife, she's more prone to give truth. And we, but if we're going to love people, right? We're gonna if we're going to love, we have to be able to do both. And and so the most loving thing that we can do sometimes. When someone is just spewing negativity, maybe they're gossiping about somebody else or they're, they're talking negatively about God, is just say, hey, wait, wait a second. Um, the most loving thing I can do right now is to stop you and just say, hey, I can't hear this. I can't hear this about God. I can't hear this about, it's not that I don't love you, but let me pray with you. And stop the negative the negative talk, at least about other people. That's the most loving thing that we can do in these situations is to lovingly share truth. Because the Bible is full of passages that tells us not to gossip. But a lot of times we just gossip in our mind about people. We think the worst about people. We don't give them a chance. They are already convicted from our standpoint in our mind. They don't even have a chance. And we need to confront that. A negative thought people we keep on playlist, on repeat, on play replay determine our future. So anybody like to go to the beach? Okay, so uh, I'm still trying to get used to this New Jersey beach thing. Um, that water is cold. I'm not talking about going to the beach today, but like in June and July, it's like really cold. Someone just told me, uh, yeah, you can't go into water till like August. Um, and, and like I've tried. And you just can't. I love to go out. Into the, and so whenever I go down south and in Caribbean and I go out in the ocean, I like it. But you notice that when you go into the ocean, where you enter the ocean is not where you come out. Why? Because if you go out there and you're wading and you're bobbing up and down there, you, you, you move. The current takes you. And where you come out is a different place. And so if you go out of the water, you come forward. That's not your people. That's not your, it's not your chair or your umbrella. You have to adjust. You have to make a, a, a recentering. You need to get back 
to where you need to be. And that's the same way in our minds. Our negative thinking causes us to drift away from people. Relationships cause us to drift away from God and the truth. We're to, we're, we're the, the truth of Christ is to dwell in us richly. And we, we move away from that center. And the longer we stay in the ocean, the further we go. So the longer we stay in these negative patterns, the further away we will get to center, out of center. And we need to come back. We need to get centered back up. Because if you sit in somebody else's chair... If you take you you get under you you, you lay down on somebody else's towel, it's not going to be a good deal. So here's here's what we need to do. We need to we need to talk about it in small groups. We need to just be, just get the elephant that's in the room. Just just name it, admit it. Confession is a good thing. To say, I I have negative self talk. All the time, and I need help. I need you to pray with me. I need, I need, I need your. You guys love me the most. <laughs> help me with this. And and then we need to. We need to lovingly stop other people that are speaking negativity into our life, or maybe gossiping about other people. We just need to love and say, "Hey, the most loving thing I could do for you right now is to stop you. I can't hear this because." If you, t- if you continue to tear down that person, not only are you hurting them, but you're hurting me and you're hurting yourself. And so I don't want you to do that. So the most loving thing I can do is stop you. And then there's a, there's a plan that I would love for us to do together. If you haven't done this on version, it's by Jenny Allen. The plan is get out of your head. A really good plan. And, and I, I just want... I, this is a challenge. Like, don't do it by yourself. This is about community, right? So do it with somebody else. Ask somebody else to do it with you. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's someone. Maybe your whole small group can do it. Do that together. And, and interact on these ideas. And talk about it. So that's my first challenge. The main idea, remember, allowing negativity, negative thinking to dwell in our minds will negatively impact our whole life. We cannot change what we don't, what we fail to confront. Next point is let, we let the word of Christ confront our thinking with praise. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs. I believe this is really mainly talking about a corporate setting, but we can apply this in our lives personally. One of the things that helped me at the MVC was that I prepared my mind with with listening to Christ-centered praise music before I went. So it tells us here that we're to, to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual. The best... The best praise music is the one that is, is, is filled with truth. Because it's it, in, in a powerful way, using music as a medium, it, it fills our minds and our hearts with, with the right things that we need to focus on. And it, it, it's, not, it's not that he says it once, but God shows us in Ephesians chapter 5, Verse 19, it says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. So just a reminder. And if you go back one verse to verse 18, it tells us not to be drunk with wine, where there is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is don't, don't allow your mind to be controlled um, 
with alcohol. Don't allow your body to be controlled with alcohol. That's one of the examples, but he's saying that allow the Holy Spirit. I love what the NLT says with this verse. It says, do not get drunk with wine, for that will destroy your life. And that's a good principle to live by. If you if you get drunk, something bad is most likely going to happen. There's probably nothing good that will happen from that. And the same way is if we allow our minds to be intoxicated by negative thinking, what good is it what good's going to come from it? And so we're to allow the spirit to fill our mind. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Otherwise, we're just going to be intoxicated with these negative thoughts or words of gossip about other people or negativity towards God. The negative thought playlist that we keep on replay determines our future. So we confront that negative playlist by putting off and putting on a praise list, a a worship playlist. And so I highly recommend, we have QR codes, you can get it on Spotify, um, iTunes, and um, Amazon, our 2024 worship playlist for, for this church. And I just want to share a song that's just been on replay for in, in my, on my play, playlist over and over for the last um, few weeks. It's called Plead the Blood. And it starts out, it says, Here and now I draw a boundary against every weapon that's formed. The thief and his plans will pass over when he sees the red on the door. I plead the blood. The enemy can't take my family because this home belongs to the Lord. So I'm not afraid to remind him that he has no claim in this war. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. Because my future is glory to glory and my freedom's been purchased in full. For all of the weight of his suffering, the lamb will receive his reward. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. It's more than enough. I plead the blood of Jesus. My shield and my shelter, it's my defense. I claim it over and over again. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. What can for sin atone? Nothing but the blood. What good that I have done? Nothing but the blood. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood. For my future, this I plead, nothing but the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood of Jesus. It's more than enough, I plead the blood of Jesus. My shield and my shelter, it's my defense. I claim it over and over again, I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. These are the thoughts that we need to 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 be filling our minds with. These are the thoughts that we need to be intoxicating our minds with, the truth about who we are and who God is and what he has done for us and, and what he does in the world. Rather than that negative playlist playing over and over and over again. So I encourage you to get that playlist, Liberty's 2024 worship playlist. And remember, allowing negative thinking will dwell, <laughs> allowing negative thinking to dwell in your mind will negatively impact your whole life. You cannot change what you fail to confront. So the first point was the Word of Christ um, confronts our thinking with community and then with praise, and then next. The word of Christ confronts 
uh, our thinking with gratitude. Gratitude. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanks, thankfulness in our, your hearts to God. Again, we go to Ephesians chapter 5, and this time verse 20, it's the next verse. It says, giving thanks always and for everything for God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're to give thanks for everything. Always and for everything. And gratitude is a powerful tool to control our negative self-talk. Gratitude can confront. It's, it's like a, it's been a scientific experiment in the past that if we take time to, to uh, be grateful to, to look at the things and to count our blessings one by one, as the, sim, as the hymn uh, um, says, then we, it's hard for us to think negatively. It's hard for us to be depressed. It's hard for us to, be, to, to, to have this intoxication of negativity. It says to give thanks always and for everything to God. It's amazing. So our ingratitude, the principle that, that, that I get from this is the ingratitude playlist that we keep on replay determines our, our, our future. If we choose, choose just to see the negative, then it's going to lead us to a place that we don't want to be. A few weeks ago when we were coming home from Dallas, we got to the airport and we were uh, going to the security um, check, bag check. And um, <clears throat> so we have TSA uh, pre-approval, right? So that's like a special line. So when we came in, they told us, you got to go way down there. No problem. <laughs> and we started moving towards that. Behind us was a lady um, that was having a really bad day. Um, and she, you, could, you could tell she was having a bad day by what she was saying and how loudly she was saying it. Um, and she was like, I got to get to my, I got to get to my gate. Where's American? Where can I get to? A, and, and they're like, you got to go down there about five minutes. And so she was just, just yelling obscenities. Bleepity, bleepity, bleep. And then every once in a while, she would say the name of Jesus. And then more bleepity bleeps. And I was like, what is going on in her head? What, what playlist is she playing in there? That playlist of, I'm going to miss my plane. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to make it. No one cares about you. Maybe that's what she was hearing. Maybe she was hearing these people are so, so incompetent. Why are these people in my way? Because these are the things that were coming out of her mouth. Like, get out of my way. I'm so much better than everyone else. She didn't say that, but that's what, what her attitude, you could tell. Everyone is lying to you. Is that what she was hearing? Is that the negativity that was playing in her mind? Maybe she was hearing, I can't trust anyone here. But it was, I mean, I was like, I just wanted to go run and hide, get in a fetal position because it was, it was so bad. I was like, man, someone should help her. But who has, who has what it takes to help that? And, and it was... It was a struggle, and I was convinced, man, like, she can't be a Texan. That she's got to be from New Jersey. <laughs> Just like, or Brooklyn, or the Bronx. I mean, she can't, she's not, she can't be from Texas. She's got to be from the East Coast. Um, it was, it, <laughs> you know I'm right. But the idea is like, 
there was no gratitude. People that were trying to help, she was just criticizing. And, and what ingratitude playlist was just playing on in her mind? And that's why we need to have a gratitude playlist. A gratitude playlist. And, and, and you know, I, I told you about my, my RBF at times, and, and I need to intentionally refocus my face. And I, but I also need to refocus my, my gratitude. I need to recenter my gratitude. And, and there's a couple ways I think that we can do that. And I think having a journal, a journaling is, is amazing. But have a, have a page that, of things that you're, you're thankful for and just keep writing and adding to that list as, as often as you can. And then when you're having this mindset where you just can't get out of the negative thinking, go to that journal and just start reading the things that you said you were grateful for at one time and remind yourself. Another suggestion is to, is to make a gratitude jar. So I don't know how you want to do this, but you have a jar and maybe it's a three by five card, but you write down things that, that, that you're grateful for, or one thing that you're grateful for, and you put it in that jar. And every time you think of something else, you put it in that jar and you keep filling that jar. Maybe it's good things that happen throughout your, your, your year. And then, and then when, you, when you need it most, when you need to be encouraged, get in that jar and just start reading those things. Because we need to have this gratitude playlist playing in our minds so that we can be what God wants us to be. If we allow negative thinking to dwell in our minds, we will negatively, it will negatively impact our whole lives. And we cannot change what we fail to confront. So today, I just encourage you with these four next steps. Just real simple, and I've already said them. Talk about your negative thinking in community. Bring it up to your to your leader, say, or leaders. Just just say, hey, we need to we need to make this a topic of discussion every week, and and help each other, and and then get a get and listen to the 2024 Liberty Worship playlist. And then make a journal of gratitude or a jar of gratitude. I just encourage us. It's a battle that we face every day or every week regularly. Amen? So let's, let's do something about it. And let's confront because we can't change what we don't confront, what we fail to confront. And let's make a difference in the world because to go back to that that first exercise that we did. It was impossible for you to make a mean face and tell somebody Jesus loves you. But isn't that why we're here? That's why we're here, to share the love of Christ. But that sharing the love of Christ needs to match our face. But if our face is, is uh, as a result of our, all this negative thinking, we're not going to be thinking about telling people that Jesus loves them. And so I encourage it today.
Jesus Christ, I'll say that it is well. 